I'm going to quite a, try to do a quick um, review of uh, how to play changes, how to play the changes of 12 bar blues with some chord suggestions. I'm going to start off by reviewing G blues, G7, C7, D7, or G9, C9, D9, or G13, C13, D13, or any other number of different things. Um, and then I'm going to switch it to the key of E. Uh, by request. Um, so uh, in, in, in quick review, the blues, 12 bar blues, is just basically there's G7, C7, D7, simplest um, way to play it is I'll count it and it's, it'll be 12 bars of 4, 4, 1, 2, oh, 1, 2, 3, G7, one, to C7, Two bars of G7. C7 for two bars. G7 for two bars. D7, a bar. C7, a bar. Two bars of G7. Sometimes you can go back to the five chord for the last bar, sometimes you don't, depending on what the guys that you're playing with are doing or what you decide to do. Um, so, with that in mind, there's, uh, the way I teach beginning improvisation for the blues is there's really two ways to look at it. One is to play a simple blues scale shape, which if we're looking at G, um, the easiest way to find out how to play a pentatonic related shape that will work great over all three set of all three chords in a G blues is to think up three half steps. Most of you will know that's a minor third, but three frets, three half steps, minor third, whole step and a half step, however you think about it, but up a minor third basically. So you're going to move it from a G to a B flat. So basically you're playing B flat pentatonic. Now just like a major key like D for instance, you can play any change within the key of D major uh, now if you play D major and you play a D major pentatonic set of changes and I'm, I'm not going to review the pentatonics right this second but I've done videos on those before you can play any melodic idea using those pentatonic shapes combinations of them anything and it works over every chord in the key of D, in the key of D major, not D blues, not some off chord like a C major. But you now the concept for the blues is pretty much the same thing. Even though we're playing three dominant chords, a, a, a pen, major pentatonic scale, a minor third up from the, the key center, in this case G, so B flat pentatonic, that one set of five pentatonic shapes works over all three of these chords. It's kind of a similar thing of, uh, it relates to the way a major pentatonic does to a major key. So let's just explore that for just one quick second in G. I'm going to play, um, I'm not going to review the G pentatonics. You can go back and look at my video for that. There's G7. Let's look, or I'm not even going to read, well, maybe I will real quickly show you B-flat pentatonics. Here they are really, really quickly. B-flat pentatonics, starting from the lowest position, there's, there's a B-flat. Or, uh, or, here's your B-flat. thinking of it as a G bluesy shape, but it's B flat pentatonic. Here's your G and your B flat. And last one, here's your G. So those shapes work over all three changes of a, a G, G blues. So let's check out those three changes just for a second.
works over all five shapes. Let's go to C7. C9 in this case, you can play the C7, C9, C7, any, 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 any consonant extended C7 chord, meaning a 6 or a 9, or a 6 and a 9. Um, so here's your C9. Okay, now let's move to the D. D9, I'll just play just a D9 in this case. Same B flat major or G minor pentatonic shape, same shape. So once again, that's that's kind of improv one, um, a minor a, a pentatonic major pentatonic scale, a minor third up from your blues, twelve bar blues changes tonal center. All right, here's here's two. Um, number two is you're going to play. What I call, and again, there's another. I've done another video on this called uh, Pentatonic Blue Shapes One. I think it is, where you're going to play what's called a blues pentatonic, either playing the pentatonic scale. Uh, in this case, I'll play since we're in G. I'll play a pentatonic scale. Uh, there's your G pentatonic, right? But instead of playing a six, we're going to play a seven. Six in there too is great. I mean, but now, now it's no longer a pentatonic scale. It's got six notes, but it's the same type of idea. It's shapes. Um, if you just change the each pentatonic scale, change the six into a seven, which again that prior video explains a little more detail. You get you get um, dominant shapes. Well, in this case, you play a dominant pentatonic for each change. C dominant uh, G dominant pentatonic. <laughs> C7, that's not actually one of them, let's, uh, let's do a uh... playing the changes really quickly G G uh, G7 C7 G7 D7 C7 so there you go so you've got um, you can hear the changes more clearly now that you don't have to play one or the other you can play both uh, and you'll hear the change in sound I'm just going to do just on a G chord really quickly um, B flat pentatonic here's your G7 now uh, switching it to a G dominant pentatonic scale So here, that might sound like this. Here's back. I'll just go straight to the D. you can use both together to create interesting lines. 
And if you switch them close to one another, it's a little more, I'm trying to be just kind of real clear about what I'm playing, but there's a bazillion ways to blend those together. Okay, quickly, um, turning this G blues into an E blues. All I'm gonna do in this case is I'm gonna take this G and go, there's my E. So basically, I'm just playing an E7. In this case, I'm playing a cool little vampy thing, which I can show you some other time. But now you can take that up a fourth and play. There's your A7. You could play instead a, uh, an A13 or an A13 like this or an A13 like this. Lots of different ways of getting those chords. So here's the sound E. Okay, so that's using a using a, a E7. B, and then you can end up on your E instead of this, or this, that's an E9, or that's an E9 there. So if you want to kind of do your chord changes in this part of the fingerboard, you can go. it from a half step above for theoretical reasons I won't explain but it's uh, tritone sub okay so now let's go to our um, improvisation ideas the cool thing is if you know G pentatonic let's do that let's use our little our formula E uh, three half steps oh that's a G how nice so now I can use all my G pentatonic stuff over all those changes. shapes. E7, I might use that E. This E shape. And I might go to this one. So there you go. So again, your shapes are all those dominant pentatonic shapes. E. I'm always, again, just to reiterate, I'm always looking for a target, uh, a note to look at to see the chord shape. In this case, E.
that's an odd one. It's a dominant with a sharp four. That's your E. That's a great one to use as the half step above dominant chord sliding into any chord that you're headed towards. In other words, if let's say I was headed towards an A7, we get E. Now we're going to go to this A7, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to go to a B, B flat seven, and use that shape I just used. theoretical reason it's a Lydian dominant chord when played a half step above the, your tart the chord that you're headed toward that ends up giving you a, a, a dominant altered sound headed toward any chord um, so anyway um, I know this is fast you can rewind you know people will criticize me for showing off or trying to get I don't think I'm showing off believe me but the, uh, but I'm moving too fast and giving you too much information but nice thing about video you can stop it and roll back um, so your E shapes are It's a great one. And then, which is just an octave above the one down there. Now, again, those go to the A chord, A7 chord, or to the B7 chord. Um, quick little addendum, because I'm under 20 minutes, is that when I think the blues, even if I'm playing those basic rudimentary shapes, um, again, I'll do it in, in E, if I'm playing G pentatonic, That shape gives you a flat three, there's your E, flat three, four, five, seven, one. Well, between the flat seven and the one, there's a, uh, a note that's great to use, as there is also a note between the five and the four. To me, this flat, flat five note is just as much a part of the blues as the flat three and flat seven. So I rarely would not play that in some kind of a lick. So there's, there's that. And again, these are just blues scales. There are other note sets and or scales that work great for this type of thing. One of the um, uh, cool things about the blues is that if you're playing that kind of a sound, a uh, diminished scale also works great on that. That's a, that's a wonderful scale that you'll hear lots of guitar players, Robin Ford, Larry Carlton, people like that, uh, as they're playing these kind of bluesy rock jams, they'll use a, an E diminished scale, but it's a, it, it's well, it's really a D straight diminished scale, but it's what's called an E half whole. And it, that scale has all those cool blues notes in it, plus a couple. So it's... um. We can go more into that some other day, but food for thought. Um, and again, sometimes just by saying things like this, you get a little perk and you go figure it out for yourself. I hope that's the case. Um, long lesson, but I hope this helps you explore e-blues.